in this one, I wanted to take a look at the new after function in Next.js 15. I mentioned it in my last video, going over all of the new features in Next.js 15, but I wanted to talk about it in a little bit more detail today. So we're gonna look at five different examples of certain ways that it works or certain ways that it doesn't work. Before we get into the actual code, let's just first talk about where these thing, where this thing can be used. Like where can the after function be used? And it has right here. So it can be used inside of server components, which is mostly what we'll be using it in. You can use it in server actions, route handlers, and middlewares. Uh, we're gonna be looking at mostly server components with one example of a server action. Uh, but, you know, just so you know, you can use it in other places as well. All right, so let's look at the happy path, which is the code I have right here. And basically, we call something. In this case, it is a successful request that is going to get all of our tweets, 10 to be exact. Uh, and then it's going to, after that's done, we'll see it print out to my console here on the right, uh, this text right here, happy path. This is clogged. This is logged. Uh, after the above fetch finishes. All right, so let's just click on that, see what happens. So on our left side, we have all of our tweets. That is what we expect it to happen. So that's great on the user experience side. But then also we have uh, this happy path uh, console log that did in fact get put to our console. And this is good. This means that you can, you know, it'll work as you expect, right? This, this is great. Typically what you would wanna do, as I mentioned in my other video is if you have some logging that you wanna do, or if you maybe need to do something with analytics, maybe you wanna track something, track that a request was made or whatever it is, um, the after function would be a great place to do it. It's gonna take this callback that looks like this, uh, and you can just kind of execute whatever you want in there. And it will do so after everything, uh, after all of the, the fetching and everything, asynchronous stuff completes inside of your function. Uh, and then it will run that and you don't have to worry about it being cut off. Let's say if it's like a serverless environment, you don't have to worry about any of that. It will happen for you by Next.js. So that's pretty awesome. And because Next.js has its own, you know, server aspect to it, it'll kind of just work. Now let's look at this cookies one. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to try setting cookies. So instead of using successful or unsuccessful, we want to set a cookie for the response right to be on the response but what we're going to see here is we're actually going to get an error so let's try that and the front end part of it actually works so we still get back the data that we expect uh, but we get this error here in our console let's go up and take a look it says an error occurred in a function passed to unstable after or just after cookies can only be modified in a server action or route handler we know that this isn't going to work because the docs tell us that it's not going to work. And we understand why it's not going to work. That's because after is running after the response has already been sent to the client and cookies can only be sent before the response is sent to the client, not after. So we understand then why this can't work. But what's weird, maybe I think, is why does the error say that cookies can only be set inside of a server action or a route handler. Because if you look at our code, we have it inside of our server action. So what's happening here? Well, remember that the after function is being invoked after the response is already sent, which means that the server action has already completed. So too would have the route handler. So after really is registering a unit of work, a function, to be run on the server by Next.js. So Next.js's server outside, separate from the server action. And that's why this actually thinks that it's not running inside of a server action, even though based on our code, we might think that it is, right? Um, at least I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. That's kind of how I worked it out in my head. Uh, so, so anyway, I just, I thought that was kind of interesting. And if you ever come up with this and you're looking at that and maybe you're getting kind of hung up on this part of the error, remember that the after function is registering, I believe registering code to be run by Next.js separate from the server action, separate from the route handler. And that's why we get an, an error message that makes it seem as though it's not being run inside of it, even though our code might have us thinking otherwise. All right. Uh, now 
let's see what happens if we run multiple of these. And so here we have this code here, actually, let's kind of let's get some separation down here. Here we have uh, three different after functions, we have multiple calls. And the question is, um, what order are they going to be running? Will it be a first in last out? Or a first in first out? What are we going to kind of end up here as far as execution goes? So let's, let's hit the button here and see what happens. One, two, three. Okay, so we got a first in first out basically, right? Um, I believe in Go for here's this is not Next.js. This is just another example of another language or another. Well, in this case, it's a language, but it could also be a framework. In Golang, you have the defer keyword and the defer keyword will basically you can add it to anything and it will run that at the end of the function instead of where it is in that code block. And so I believe in Go, it's a first in last out, which means that whatever the last defer was will be the first one to get executed. And so I found that kind of interesting and I was wondering here how this would work. So it is indeed a first in first out. The order that you run these in will be preserved when it actually goes to run these. All right, so sort of similar to the trying multiple of them is what happens when they're nested. So in this case, we still have multiple, but because they're nested, how will that affect the order? And I think this one's a bit more interesting than just the multiple of them lined up in succession. So what I want to ask you is what, what do you think it will be? How do you think it will actually print? And by the way, these, these numbers here are not necessarily the order in which it will print. These are the layers, the levels. So we have the root and then we have one. And then within one, there's another nested one. So I gave that 2.1, whereas this one down here is 1.2. Just so it wasn't necessarily the order. It was more so just about the, the root level and the number in which like the, the sequence in that level. So comment down below which one you think or what you think the order of this execution will be. I'm curious what you guys think it will be, but let's give that a shot now. So we do try nested. And if you look down here, everything within each one executes before even getting to the next one, which means that we have 1.1, 2.1, and then we have 1.2. Kind of interesting. Again, they mention in the documentation that you can that you can nest this after function. I don't totally see why you would want to nest it. Um, I'm not really sure what the use case for that would be, but they call it out as something that you can do. And so with that, I think it's useful to know what the order of execution will be because you know, you might be wondering why something's not happening when you think it is or, you know, whatever else. And I think it's important to know what the order of, of stuff is. All right. So the last one that we'll look at is the case of an error. And this is also important to know because what's going to happen is that the after function, and we can do that here, we can just call this error. So we got an error, right? So we have this unsuccessful call here that basically just returns us a 500. And what's important to note is that the after function here is still called. It will be called in the case of an error or in the case of something just not completing completely or successfully. Um, and that's really important to understand because let's say you only want to log something. If something is successful, you would have to use some logic to, to check, hey, was this a, a 400 or a 500 or a 200 or whatever it is? you would need to be able to accommodate that and account for that. So just kind of something to keep in mind when you're going through and using this function when Next.js 15 does come out. I'll put the links uh, in the description that I mentioned, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely subscribe and uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Peace.